So I get a lot of questions from you guys on how to become a video essayist, and it's great to see that tons of people want to join this community which I absolutely adore, however a lot of you are having some serious trouble with this, and the fact that there are almost zero videos on this topic, well that doesn't exactly help. So today I want to make this old fashioned commentary to talk about what it takes to be a video essayist, and this video I hope will be invaluable to anyone looking to enter this space, and equally as interesting to anyone who simply wants to know my controversial thoughts on the video essay community. This is an experiment. So if this video gets lots of views and lots of likes, I will seriously consider making a sequel to this video or even making this advice on being an essayist a short three part series. But anyway, cutting to it, I want to start with the most important thing when it comes to being an essayist, because I have a major gripe with a lot of people in the video essay community. That's right, call up Killer Keemstar, get your pitchforks nice and sharp, because we're about to start some drama up in here. Uh, uh, okay, I'm not actually starting drama. But I do have a pretty major gripe with the video essay community. But why should I say it when Patrick H. Willems has already said that for me? And over the course of the year, I made more and more of these, and as I looked around YouTube, I realized how boring I find most video essays, including my own. YouTube is saturated with them now, and it seems like every 20-something dude with a Blu-ray copy of The Dark Knight wants to get in on the fun. And there are plenty of people doing great work, but since so many of us are using the same format, it's easy for them all to blur together. This is the number one problem essayists face, and it is a critical point of the most pivotal importance that if you do not address it, you will blur into the murky background with so many other essayists out there, and you will never be anyone's favourite creator. Now at this point, I'm sure a lot of you think that what I'm going to say is the most important thing to being an essayist is that you need to stand out. But I'm not going to say that, because I've seen hundreds of YouTubers give out that advice, it's a cliche, and frankly it triggers me every time I hear it, because it isn't even a correct cliche. Saying you should stand out is like someone giving me the manuscript for their novel, me reading it, and then me giving the feedback. Hmm, alright. Basically right, what you need to do is you need to make your novel stand out more. Uh, yeah, can you elaborate on that? Right, right. Well, basically, you've got to make it so your novel is different from others on the market, which will make it better. Because it's different. That is shit advice. I know, I know, Henry is a very naughty boy, he just said a swear, but it genuinely is piss poor advice, because while it is mostly correct, and I'm not saying Patrick is wrong in that clip, in fact I'm actually totally agreeing with him in that, but while it is hinting at what the creator should be doing, saying you should stand out is so vague, so unnecessarily, painfully vague, that it could do more harm than good, as it might convince the creator that he has to reinvent the wheel in order to stand out, which of course he shouldn't, because here is the real number one tip I can give you when it comes to not just being an essayist, but being a creator in general. Find a way of creating videos that only you can pull off, or in layman's terms, find your voice. Now what makes for a voice? How do I go about finding one? Are there specific things I can do to find it? All of those are good questions to ask, and all of which we'll get to later. But before I talk about creator voice, I want to tell you a story. One from my YouTube career, which has really been a mystery for a lot of you until this point, because I've never really talked about it, and I feel it perfectly summarises an incredibly important thing you need to know as an essayist. And well, what is it? I have a set second channel. It's called Rusky, and it's essentially the closer look but for video games, where I look at the craft of game making. And with this channel, I had an absolutely insane success. I launched this channel with two videos, the first Why Fallout 4 Failed is currently sitting at 1 million views, and the second The Day Daisy Died is currently at 1.3 million views. Bear in mind that when I started this channel, the closer look was at around maybe 90,000 subscribers, and of those 90 
20,000, I think about 1,000, actually subscribe to this channel. So these videos, the mad success, if you discount those thousand or so people who subbed at the beginning, this success was almost completely independent of the closer look, which I'm very chuffed with. But for pretty much most people out there who dream about being a YouTuber, this is the good life. This is the goal they strive so hard to achieve. But as you can see, I haven't uploaded onto this channel in over 10 months. I have effectively abandoned it. And this is something I get a lot of questions about as to why. Why I basically threw away this insane success, because for many people this is like getting a winning lottery ticket, then throwing it into a fire and never cashing it in. To be honest, there are a lot of reasons as to why. I mean, I'm working on my novels and this channel and running another YouTube channel as well, that's a lot of work for just one guy. But honestly, the big one, the heaviest straw on the camel's back, I have no idea how video games work. I made my video the day Daisy died and it was a runaway success. At the time, pretty much if you were a person who watched gaming content on YouTube, this video was probably in your suggested section and it got a really good amount of positive feedback. But then, I saw how Soviet Womble, that's right, that guy who makes all those funny moments videos on like armor and all that, Soviet Womble had been making a very secret series of video essays on why the same game, Daisy Standalone, really failed. In Womble series, which is private, so I won't share a link or show any footage because he doesn't want the general public to see it, but in the videos, he goes in depth. He talks about development cycles, work tickets, and so many elements of game design that I had never even heard heard of before. Soviet Womble knows an insane amount about game design because I think he studied it in college and me watching his series, it felt like I'd stumbled into Narnia. I was discovering a thousand new things for the first time about game design and I felt profound profoundly embarrassed. I felt the most intense imposter syndrome that I had ever felt in my life, and the real kicker? It was warranted. That is the reason I abandoned my gaming essay channel, because when I saw these videos, I knew for a fact I had to change the focus of my YouTube career because I knew I was a hack. And all the views, all the ad revenue and clout, none of that was worth a fucking thing when I knew for a fact that I wasn't providing insight, I wasn't adding anything to the conversation, I was just a member of the echo chamber that contributed towards the blurry mass that Patrick H. Willems just talked about. But what's the point I'm trying to make here? Okay, so let's say you want to make a video on Star Wars The Last Jedi. You want to point out why the film failed. So what are you going to do? Say that Rey's character is a Mary Sue? Say how Admiral Holdo ramming that ship was bad because it broke the established canon of things? Do you want to bring up how they mistreated Luke's character by making him a shadow of a former self and turning him from an optimist into a pessimist? If that's what you're going to say in your video, then in the words of Will Turner, that's not good enough! The reason why that's not good enough is because everyone has already pointed out these things. This is why a whole lot of essays out there feel so samey and boring, because it's an echo chamber of the same arguments, the same points made over and over again. If you want to make the kinds of essays that people adore, the kind that people find genuinely fascinating, you need to make fresh points and insightful arguments, and that is way easier said than done, but it's also 100% true. I mean, if you want an example of that, take how I cover The Last Jedi. When I was watching the film in the cinema, I noticed an exhausting amount of the device bathos, and for me, that ruined the movie. I looked around and noticed how nobody had even said the word bathos in any essays or reviews on the film, and I knew I had a winning ticket because I had a mainstream popular film and a fresh angle to take on it that nobody had even spoken on before. And when I look back now and see how that video got one point 
1.2 million views. I'm not surprised. In fact, if that video got any less than about 900,000 views, that was what would have surprised me, because I knew that I had a fresh angle on a popular topic, which meant that the video would have a really high watch time and click rate. And all I had to do then was give it a badass thumbnail and a title, and I did, and the video exploded. And I know this sounds egotistical, but I was not surprised in the least when it did, because I knew that I was providing a fresh insight into a very hot topic that many people were interested in. But here's the big question to ask about all of that. How did I notice the fact that this film had overused the device bathos while seemingly nobody else did? Truthfully, because I had done an exhaustive amount of research into creative writing and what makes for good storytelling before I even saw the movie. And this is leading us to the core of it. The most harsh, the most soul-crushing, and frankly the most important truth to essay making. The entire purpose of video essays is to provide insightful analysis of a piece of media. How can you provide insightful analysis when you have no insight? Those were the very thoughts that made me quit my second channel, and frankly, as far as I'm concerned, if you know nothing more about a topic than the average Joe, you should not be making video essays on that topic. That is the core of it. That is the reason why most essays feel so samey and boring, because a lot of essayists, they don't do the legwork. They don't study the material. Their entire research cycle is to watch other essayists absorb their points and then just use them in their own videos. And before you know it, everyone's copying ideas off of each other, and before you know it, almost every last video is the same. However, that doesn't mean you should give up, that doesn't mean you should resign to making Minecraft Let's Plays and comedy vlogs, because if you yourself want to make film essays, your first step is to realise the area that you are the most knowledgeable in, or at least have the greatest interest in, and then make that area the focus of your channel. For an example, let's say that you want to analyse the craft of cinematography, but you have no background in cinematography and you don't understand how it works. Well. Here's what you do. You take an educational course in filmmaking, you read books on the topic, you make it your mission to become a total and complete expert in the field of cinematography, until you know a whole wealth of knowledge that even people in the know do not know. And then you carry on learning, and then you bring that knowledge front and centre and use it in your videos. This is a quest that you will never complete, because it is impossible to become a total expert in anything. But just because something is impossible, that doesn't mean it's not worth trying to obtain. I made the active choice to narrow my sights. I chose not to focus on the field of game design because I already had a ton on my plate and frankly that topic didn't interest me all that much, so I picked the focus of being a writer, which was very good for me because I was trying to be a writer. And uh, by the way, my debut novel is coming out at some point next year, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But my side hustle of trying to write novels and my main hustle of doing the closer look and studying writing, both of those complemented each other, as when I worked on my novel I learned things and used it in the close look, and when I worked on the closer look I gained new insights and used that to work on my novel, and it was this kind of synergy. And it was great because I narrowed my sights and I've been getting better ever since. Creative writing, I am trying very hard to make that my speciality, and so you'll notice that in most of my videos they're written from a writer's perspective because that's the area I have a ton of experience in. I like to think that in each of my video essays I bring to light a little bit of knowledge or insight that my viewers didn't know before so they can then learn from it. And if you don't do that as an essayist, if you don't help people understand a topic in a way they never knew before, you are not a good essayist. That is unfortunately the plain and simple truth. And when it comes to writing essays, there aren't that many essayists in the community that take the focus of creative writing on movies, so I think that does work for my benefit and for my general appeal. And this goes for you. Not just the general viewer, you. 
If you are currently an essayist or you one day plan to be, you need to be always learning. This is not advice, this is not a guideline, this is a prerequisite. Always be listening to podcasts, always be reading books and watching lectures and broadening your knowledge around your specific niche. Because I guarantee you a huge chunk of that knowledge that you soak up will work its way into your videos and your essays will be all the more insightful, interesting and educational for it. But I promised at the start of this video that I was going to talk about finding your voice as an essayist and I don't like to break my promises. So the truth is, each and every good essayist has their own voice. This may sound odd, but it's completely true. Different essayists have different perspectives they use to attack a subject. Give 10 different essayists the exact same topic, the same base idea for a video, and all 10 of them, if they have a strong, unique voice, would tackle it in an entirely different way. Nerdwriter, for example, has a way of delivering a script where he will pause and say things slowly to add emphasis on a word or set of words. Here's an example. But you can't just mine the source material for parts. Adaptations and remakes don't require strict adherence or obedience or even necessarily respect. Just an understanding of what made the original so powerful in the first place. And do you want to know what happens when you copy the voice of another creator? Well, it looks like this. If I had to pin down the singular reason why the film Logan surprised me so much, it would have to be its impressively small scale. Yeah, I'm pretty embarrassed when I look back on my older stuff, but when I was starting out, I saw the way Nerdwriter delivered his voiceover, and I consciously decided to imitate it when making my video Logan the death of a genre, and I look back on it with shame. <laughs> and my advice to you, for the love of God, don't do this. Do not steal the voices of creators wholesale, although it is fine to just copy little bits here and there and see if they work out well for you. I mean, how else are you going to improve your craft if you never experiment. But right now for me, I think I've spent like seven years on YouTube, uh, I think maybe like two, two and a half of those years being a video essayist, and in that time I like to think that I've nailed down exactly what my voice is. I mean, you look at my recent video essays and you see that I'll pronounce everything in my way, and there aren't really any other essayists that cover topics in the same way I do. And that's basically, that is your end goal. You want to be making essays in a way that only you can make. If you're making essays and you copy my style or anyone else's style, I won't hold it against you and neither will any of the other essayists because we're all very supportive in this community. I mean, after all, you can't trademark a style. But if you want to become your own standout creator, you don't just want to blend into the beigey background with a dozen others, you want to be unique and easily identifiable and the kind of person that I personally would drop everything when I see that you've uploaded because I want to watch your video if you want to achieve that, you need to discover your voice. Do you want to deliver your line slowly in a low and calming voice, something like how stories like old does it? Do you want to have your essays filled with snarky wit, where you combine interesting analysis with humour, like Lindsay Ellis does? Do you want to tackle it all from the perspective of a writer, where you don't put that much effort into motion graphics, because when it comes to editing, you're extremely lazy, like... Me, for example. Um, do you want to be the kind of essayist who makes exclusively insert X film here is way worse than you remember and here's why. And you do nothing but whinge and complain about how anyone who likes a thing is actually wrong in their opinion and they need to change it. I mean, I think there's already more than enough creators out there who take that angle on things. I, I'd probably argue that one is probably more than enough. But if that truly is your voice, if being that cynical whinger is genuinely true to who you are deep inside, then screw all the positive analytical nerd writer lessons from the screenplay, now you see it crap. You make those kinds of videos because that is the voice that fits you the best. If there is something the average viewer is a master at, it's noticing when someone is using a voice that doesn't fit them as a person. But the average viewer will pretty much never consciously realise, Hey, this guy stole now you see it's style. It's pretty much never that simple, but what the viewers will realise, subconsciously, is that your voice lacks synergy. 
A lot of newer creators make the mistake of thinking that finding your voice is like browsing the shelves of a supermarket. They'll say, oh, I like this one, oh, I like that one, and they will copy elements wholesale. Those creators are wrong. Finding a voice is more like browsing the ones at Ollivander's. You try and you fail. You try, you fail. You try again, you have a little success, but you still fail. You keep trying again and again, and after years of experimenting, you finally realise the exact kind of music you want. The thumbnail style, how you enunciate your sentences and do your research, and what angle you take on attacking a topic, and your personal content strategies for how you plan to grow in the algorithm. Assemble the toolkit that is the style that fits you the best. And the only true way to discover what you want to be in your toolkit is to just create. And the more you create, the more you experiment, the clearer of an idea you will have as to exactly the kind of person you are, the voice that fits you, and the brand and style you want to have in your videos. Anyway, I've rambled on for long enough, but if you found this video useful and you want me to make a few more just like this, where I might look at a different angle of creating video essays like editing or research or any of that stuff, please do leave a like and tell me in the comments that you want exactly that. And for those of you who aren't already in the club, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I only charge every time I upload, so pretty much you'll only get charged once every 500 years. But honestly, if you could, you'd be directly supporting me so I can create more videos. And even if you can only spare the loose change of $1, that's $1 more in my income at the end of the month. And when people do that in a group, that number adds up to something considerable. I am currently recording this in my bedroom at my mum's house, so I kind of need the funds to move out, so please help me. Um, you, but basically, I really want to move out, so like my mum stops reminding me, oh, 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 Henry, this isn't a hotel. You know, she, you know she, she'll remind me it isn't a hotel, despite the fact that, you know, I, I'm actually paying rent, and I'm doing all of the chores around the house that she asks me to do. Uh, anyway, getting off of track, if you donate, you'll find a bunch of cool rewards there, you'll get access to my Patreon-exclusive Discord server, which I'm always active on, and we can discuss games and movies and all the stuff you want to do. You can also get your name in the description, and at the higher tier, I have a quick consultation session, where you can send me your work, whether it be a novel, or a screenplay, or your YouTube channel, and I'll give it a quick once-over, identify what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, and help you grow and improve your craft. So if any of that sounds good to you, please click my Patreon link in the description and just send the loose change of a couple dollars my way and trust me it really means the world to me when you do that. Clichés aside. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time on The Closer Look.